So you wanna learn how to mount all of your pedals to a pedal board, but there's a problem. And the problem is that some pedals have feet and you can't simply just throw some Velcro on in order to mount a pedal to a pedal board when you have the feet on. First solution that most people recommend is we'll just take the feet off. I think it looks dumb. So I came up with a way around it where you don't have to remove feet. And if you're like me, maybe you use a fractal system. Um, this is an FM3. And sometimes you might wanna pop off just the FM3 and use just that instead of bringing your whole giant long as a leg pedal board along with you. So that's what I'm gonna show you today is how I figured out how to mount this stuff where it's totally rock solid. I can take it and turn it upside down and shake it and it's not going anywhere. I'm also gonna show you, this thing's heavy. I'm also gonna show you how I mounted my Digitech Drop. This is the only outboard pedal I use uh, outside of the Axe FX and I needed it to sit in a place where it was out of the way of all the pedals and there wasn't space down here to mount it. So I came up with a really cool solution here. If you're using an FM9 or some other unit, there's a way around it. You'll just run the cable down here, but we'll get into that. Real quick, before we get started, I did do kind of a temporary mounting solution for the Dunlop pedal here. I just took the screws out and then screwed them in the back. So this is screwed on right now. There are gonna be some other options that I'm coming out with for the mounting the Dunlop style pedal. So hit like and subscribe, and then you'll see when that video comes out. I think you'll really like the solution. So first off, the rationale for this system. I love my fractal unit. I like the way it looks with the feet on. I didn't want to take them off and lose them. And I also wanted a system that maybe sometimes I want to pull off just my FM3 unit and not take the entire board with me. And I wanted something that wasn't, you know, so permanent. And I wanted something that was really solid. You'll see on screen now that there's me shaking the unit, holding it by every single pedal on here and nothing is coming off. And that's not because I screwed or glued anything down, at least to the pedals but it's because of how I mounted things with 3M dual lock. Let me show you how I actually did it. So this is my FM3 with the feet on. And if we take a pair of calipers and we measure the foot to the back of the device, that distance is about nine millimeters. And the problem with that is that there's not Velcro that stacks nine millimeters. And if you use 3M dual lock, which is what I'm strongly recommending because of just the sheer mounting force of it, then two pieces of that 3M dual lock together add up to about five millimeters. So we needed something that was just over nine millimeters. And the reason I wanted just over nine millimeters, not 10, not 12, not, you know, something where the unit was floating off the pedal board was because if you push down really hard, I didn't want the unit mushing at all. And so this mounting system solves that. So if you look at the pedal board, with the FM3 off, you can see there's a strip right here and strip right here. And underneath of that is simply stacked acrylic pieces that I glued together and then put the 3M dual lock Velcro on top of. And then this has countersunk screws through it and it's simply secured on the back by three M5 screws. That's the size of these holes. I didn't put thread locker on it, but if you wanted to, then it would make it even more secure. Like I showed you, this already holds a, a tremendous amount of force. Now, one of the other things I wanna point out is the length of each of these strips. If you go and you do the actual calculation for 3M dual lock and how much you would need to theoretically secure a unit, it would equate to about three strips by about 11 inches. Now, dual lock is great, but it's also pretty expensive. It's $30 for three feet and I used all of it on this. But what I did was I just used two nine inch strips for each of my units. So for two for the FC6, nine inches, and two for the FM3, nine inches. Now, while I'm here, I also wanna point out something really, really important that some people seem to ignore, and that is that the FM3 specifically has a fan port right here, and you do need to account for that. So if you actually look at how I had the Velcro set up, one piece is straight, and the other piece is at a diagonal, and that accounts for the fan port. So this all sounds great, but you're gonna need a couple tools to do it. So the first thing you're gonna need is a piece of plexiglass. You can get this at the hardware store. The specific size you'll need is 330 seconds, uh, which is about 1.5 sixteenths, which is gonna equate to about four millimeters or so. So four millimeters plus five millimeters equals just over nine millimeters if you do the very exact math for it. And that's gonna give us the exact height that we need for mounting our FC6 or our FM3. So plexiglass, if you haven't worked with it before, it's a very, very, very strong material. You can see it can just flap it and it won't break. Can't twist it, it won't tear. This is a very good material to work with. 
So how do you actually cut it? Well, you're going to need a tool called a scriber, a glass scriber. I got this one when I was into plastic modeling. Please, please, please do not try to do this with a knife and make sure that when you're doing this, you're not putting your thumb in the way of the uh, scribe. I tend to keep my thumb out here and you can even see my past marking. I think this is the exact piece of um, plastic that I used for this, but what I'll do is I'll take blue painter's tape and I will line it up about two or three times. And that gives a little bit of depth for this tool to grab onto. I'm gonna show you a demo cut here while I'm talking. You'll need about a 12 inch by 12 inch uh, sheet for this project and you can get everything that you need um, out of there if you lay it out right. Uh, so nine inches times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But what you'll do is you'll start by just dragging really slowly to get the line nice and very, very, very straight is what you're gonna need. And then you're gonna have to cut some strips off the side. So you'll start very slowly with this tool to start uh, getting your line really straight. And then once the line is established, you can start gradually adding more pressure and you'll see it starts to make these nice little curly cue plastic things that are trash and you can get rid of and they get all over your floor. And then once that's done, you're just gonna be able to bend it and then that piece will break off. So once you have your eight strips of the plexiglass, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sand them all to a nice kind of frosted color. And the reason that you're gonna do that is so that any adhesive that you apply has a nice porous surface to grip onto. So after I had my eight strips of plexiglass, the next thing that I did was I just kind of sandwiched them together with some of these cheap clips you can get from the hardware store. You could use other clamps, you could use vice grips. You just wanna make sure that the pressure is applied all along the entirety of the strip. You don't want you know, a piece where it's secured here and not secured there. Screws are going through this at the end of the day, so it's not a huge deal, but I appreciate the craftsmanship. So leave these clamps on for a little bit until the super glue dries. So what you're gonna end up with at the end of this is these frosted strips that are one inch wide, nine inches long, and about five millimeters tall. And that's exactly what we need for this. Now, the way that I actually went about putting them onto the pedal board was I would line up a strip, I would hold it in place very exactly, and then on one side or the other, I forget which, I would put a little Sharpie mark on all of the holes that I would drill, and I made sure I did them all in the exact same places. This diagonal one is gonna be a little bit different, so make sure you account for that. And then I just drilled the holes, and we were pretty much set to put everything together at that point. But there's gonna be one last step that you wanna do before you're screwing everything together. So in order for your Velcro to sit flat along the strip that you made, you're gonna to need to countersink all of the screws and make sure the screws that you buy are the countersink screws. And for that, you're gonna need something called a countersink bit. It's just this big, wide kind of bit. And all I did, you can get these in different sizes. The size doesn't really matter as long as you um, don't go too deep with it and you know, just put the screw in. If it fits, great, then move on. You just wanna make sure that you don't overdo it. So drill a little bit, test the fit, drill a little bit, test the fit. Make sure you don't overdo it because these are pretty thin strips you're working with. And if you bust through it, then you're gonna have to buy a whole nother sheet of plexiglass, which is no fun. So after that's done, you can go ahead and you can screw in everything and just make sure it's nice and tight. I think I had to use a screwdriver on top and then wrench it on the back and then it was good to go and it's really, really solid. It's not going anywhere. And then I just took those uh, pieces of dual lock and I just lined them up here. Now, one of the things you're gonna wanna make sure of when you're doing this is where on your unit do you want your Velcro to be? I want it to be right along the very edge. And then for this one, I placed the Velcro on the unit before I did the holes in the board. So if you're doing this project, you're probably smart enough that you can figure out where you need to drill your holes. And if you drill an extra hole, really no one's gonna see it. But um, that's pretty much how I mounted the FM3 to the temple board really securely without using any of the other silly mounts and stuff that they sell that don't really account for the feet height. So now let's talk about how I mounted the Digitech drop because that one took me a little bit to figure out. So this project started with me wanting the Digitech drop to be around this area on my pedal board because there's not enough space to fit it here or here or here. There wasn't another way to fit it in. And it's not the kind of thing where, you know, you can go really crazy and, you know, put it underneath the board and, you know, remove the switch and, you know, mount the switch over here. I didn't, I didn't want to disassemble the pedal or anything like that. So I found a nice place up here and you can see this right angle cable fits right between the FC6 and the FM3. And then the other one just goes here on the back. And what I did to create this mount was again, I found 
M5 standoffs, and I had to order a couple different ones, and I just screwed them in, that was it. To actually mount it, again, you could use a piece of plexiglass, but I went really overkill with it, and I went on an app called Nextdoor, where people are genuinely really helpful, and you can do little bargains with them, and I said, hey, who can cut me a piece of steel exactly these dimensions? So I measured my pedal, and then I went just like a millimeter oversize, and I ended up with this little piece of steel. Now to drill through that steel, you're gonna need a couple of things. The first thing that you should probably have when you're doing any metal drilling is something like tap magic or something that is made to lubricate while you're drilling. I would highly recommend doing this drilling on a drill press. You should probably use a metal punch to get the hole exactly in the correct place. And then, you know, they sell you special metal bits and everything at the hardware store for drilling through metal, but it's not truly hugely necessary unless you're dr drilling through something really thick. And this is 14 gauge steel. It was a heavy piece, but I only used this one bit. It was about the size of an M5 screw drilled through. And then again, I used countersink screws. And the thing is, is that that piece of metal is so thin that you can't countersink it anymore. So my countersink screws end up sitting just a little bit on top of the piece of steel, but that's okay because my 3M dual lock is pretty thick and the pedal just floats on top. So right here, I have some of the standoffs that I got from DigiKey. These are spare ones because I didn't order quite the right ones, but these are M5. I'm gonna leave a link for you in the description so you can just go and you can buy these and you'll know that they fit. And DigiKey is great. It's also, so it's Parts Express. It's also really tough to find things on there. So I'm gonna give you the link to exactly what you need. It needs to be, I think either 40 or 45 millimeters high. I'll give you the links, don't worry. I did it in two pieces, as you can see, but you could maybe do it with one piece, but the two pieces was a little bit more flexible for potential future mounting situations. Like I was saying, DigiKey is great, but it's gonna be really, really, really hard to find a washer that's the proper size and a nut that's the proper size. So I would recommend just going to Ace Hardware and taking your standoffs with you, checking which washer fits, checking which uh, nut fits. You'll need a one, two, three, four of each part, so four washers and four nuts, and then you can screw those on, screw it through there. You could probably do this with plexiglass as well, and it'll be really rock solid. So that's all I got for you about how I built my pedal board and connected everything. The Ernie Ball volume pedal is just secured with normal Velcro because I didn't want to go out and buy more, but as you can see, still pretty solid. So, so if this video helped you, I'd love if you liked and subscribed it, maybe share it with a friend and help them clean up their messy pedal board. Let me know what you wanna see in the future in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.